And welcome back to the World War II lesson presentation. What have you, May? Um, last time we talked about the Battle of Britain, uh, the invasion of France, uh, and Vichy France, which was the state of France after the uh, Nazi invasion. Uh, what we're going to do today is talk about some of the other countries, including uh, Russia and what goes on there, uh, the United States, as well as Japan. So... We're going to start off with um, in Russia. So right after we have this issue with France and, and Britain is declaring war on Germany and yet they don't really have an army to defeat them and, and the French have been taken over, uh, Hitler decides that there's not very many places to go. See, this is a great map right here. Let's take a look at this. So these are the, the allied countries right here. You have United Kingdom, Iceland, and the Soviet Union. Look at that! <laughs> this is all Axis powers right now. Finland, Norway, all these countries over here. And of course you have Sweden and Sweden and Switzerland that are, are um, at this point they're neutral. Turkey is neutral. But you only have the United Kingdom and the Soviet Union. And uh, Germany and Hitler decide that the, they didn't want to invade Britain anymore. That, that, that little gap right there, that was too much for them. Then they, the forces of, of Britain's navy power, there's the famous Battle of the Bismarck that happens, and the Battle of Britain, and the, the British pretty much stop the, the German advance across the English Channel through a few important uh, battles. And now what happens is, is uh, Germany decides that, you know, maybe we should go east, maybe we should go to the Soviet Union. This is all Liebenstrom. As we've said before, it's living space. This is all German territory. Uh, Hitler, in general, particularly hated the Slavs. He hated hated the Soviet Union, hated all these these uh, USSR nations in here, like um, even Lithuania and Yugoslavia and all, Albania, all these areas in here. He didn't like them. So basically, in 1941, um, Hitler decides to enact... Uh, it's called Operation Barabosa. And Barabosa is actually, he was an ancient German king who apparently, he died, but he, as he was sleeping in his cave, he, was, he would wake up one day and invade eastward into Russia to defeat the, the Poles, actually. But in, in this case, we have the, the Russians. So the attack was launched by Germany on the Soviet Union. It ended the non-aggression pact. Don't forget about the Ribbentrop-Molotov uh, non-aggression pact of 1939 and Germany attacks in the spring of 1941 because they try to do this to avoid the winter we have to remember that that the Germans were looking out for something a fatal flaw that most historians find with Napoleon and Hitler it is invading Russia and the reason why we don't like to invade Russia in history is because Russia is known to have severe winters so a land war against Russia can be very dangerous for your forces if if they happen to be there during winter they're not used to that and there's lots of instances where German units are actually dressed for springtime combat during the winter and, and that doesn't end up very well but uh, the Germans make tremendous advances in 1941 you could see here they're they're circling about and blitzkrieging all over this area here and and they basically scorch and burn whole swaths of the Soviet Union they're killing civilians of course trying to find Jews that's one of the main purposes is is trying to, to knock out a lot of the Jewish populations here as well and so the, the Germans are just being generally brutal and the two main cities of Russia Leningrad and Moscow they become siege by mid 1941 so by the summer Germany is already to the main cities <laughs> I mean they they've totally stomped across the western portion of Russia and Hitler decides to to pause. So so Hitler actually decides to not completely knock out the cities outright at the beginning. And, and he he lays a siege on on Moscow and Leningrad. And actually, the siege at Leningrad would last for from 1941 to 1945 to the end of the war. It was it was brutal. Um, it was 900 day siege at Leningrad. So here are some people just lying in the street dead of, of artillery fire or gunshots who knows and and this was a constant thing and could you imagine living in the winter in in over here all the way over here in the soviet union for 900 days being bombarded by shells it was 
It was it was deadly. It was more people died at Leningrad than almost any other place in World War Two. And so this leads to the Lendon lease agreement that America signs with the Allied powers. And the Lendon Lend lease is signed by FDR in 1941. The bill allows the United States to effectively lend supplies and munitions to belligerent nations. And the act favors the Allies very heavily. You can see at the map see the map here and, and see where all the money is going. So uh, 10.98 10 almost 11 billion dollars is given to Russia. Some was given to China. It looks like about um 1.6 billion given to China. Central and South America also received some funding as well. Um almost almost half a billion dollars was given to Central and South America to basically thwart the stop of fascism in South America. Uh, Africa as well, especially um areas in in southwest and in Rhodesia, these areas and these were basically just um, gifts essentially to, to nations that they that they were allied with, but I mean a fair amount of money. I mean, right here you have uh, 159 million dollars at the time. That's a lot. Uh, French West Africa was given some money. Great Great Britain, of course, was, receives uh, lots of money as well. I mean, Britain being the main ally at the time. Saudi Arabia, uh, Iraq. So there's there's all these different countries that are receiving money from the United States. And you can see that, that Germany and, and Japan are not two of those nations. And what happens, too, is part of this Lend-Lease Agreement, the uh, United States was a huge trading partner with Japan. They were huge trading partners. Uh, the United States imperialism really affected uh, Japan and, and actually brought it to where it was today. We were talking about the, the Tasho democracy before and how the 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 Emperor Hirohito took over and and really ran amok with Japan and took over parts of China and stuff like that. Well, the United States allied with China and Russia decide that, you know, we're going to cut off Japanese exports, especially oil. Oil is huge. Japan, of course, is a very tiny country. It does not have a lot of access to oil, even here in China. Uh, in places like Russia, there's a lot of access to oil in, in the Middle East. And there's some places in, in Canada and stuff, but these were found much, much later. Um, so the United States was one of the largest exporters of oil at the time, and they cut out all ex oil exports to Japan. And Japan needs those oil exports, exports to run its economy, to run its, its military. So the Japanese, because of this Lend-Lease Agreement, as well as further action to kind of uh, sanction the, J the Japanese, um, created a lot of issues, a lot of friction between the, the two nations in the Pacific. So oh, we'll talk about that in a second. We're going to talk about Japanese ag aggression. Okay, I apologize. Uh, Japanese aggression for a moment. So you see here, we'll we'll look at this map. Uh, in nineteen between nineteen forty and nineteen forty two, uh, Japan, as, as well as their attacks into Manchuria, Inner Mongolia, and other parts of China like Hong Kong, they also start taking areas that were that were once owned by the French. So you have French Indochina, you have Thailand, you have uh, places in areas in Burma. Also, you see in 1942, they, invade, they actually invade the Philippines and, and parts of, of Borneo and, and Sumatra, these areas. So Japan had a huge influence in this area. You can see kind of the, the scale to where we're drawing it over here by the map. And Japan holds all of this as part of its territories. And Japan is inching closer and, and moving eastward and eastward. And the invasion of the Philippines was a huge problem. The, the Philippines, of course, being an American territory at the time. So then we have Pearl Harbor. And I would highly suggest to watch this video. It's the speech FDR gives on, on the famous day, December 7th, 1941, a day that shall live in infamy. And a, one other thing that happens, of course, is you have the retreat of the Philippines by uh, Admiral Douglas MacArthur. And uh, basically in 1942, General MacArthur would have to leave the Philippines because the United States forces in that area were so weak that, that uh, Japan essentially had a, a naval, a very quick naval attack on the, on the islands set. And that left a lot of displaced Americans, a lot of displaced Philippines that were allied with the Americans as well. So, I mean, there's a, a huge issue with, with, with MacArthur leaving. I mean, the Philippines were essentially under American control. They had complete defense of the area until Douglas MacArthur left. So MacArthur is known to say to the people of the Philippines, I shall return. 
to help liberate the areas of the Philippines later on in the war. So, so Pearl Harbor really sets off the American entry into World War II. And this is, of course, as I said, December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor. Uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, we can kind of, we'll go into the Pacific campaign a little bit here and kind of show you. So you have Pearl Harbor over here and it attacks Hawaii. It was a huge issue, of course, because um, most of our battleship fleet at the time, which was seen as our, our one of our greatest strengths as a Navy, got com completely wiped out. But, of course, we find out later on in the war that that the the Navy isn't exactly the biggest... Uh, the, the battleships aren't exactly the, the largest asset to the, to the American forces. And I, we'll talk more about that later, of course. And what I'm going to do right now is just talk about uh, the Battle of Stalingrad. It also happened in 1942. Uh, this is a, a real footage of the Battle of Stalingrad. It was the decisive battle on the Eastern Front. So as, as, as I was saying before, the, the Germans are invading eastward and they hit these places in, in mid 1942 and and things aren't looking good for the russians but but the russians of course like it seems like every, when every major invasion happens they have a record winter so the, the this area of, of of europe is hit by a just a piercingly cold and snowy winter and we, we remember that the the germans invaded in the spring of 1941 and they were equipped like they were invading in the spring instead of invading in the winter. So, so the, you know, the Germans have these supply lines through Poland and parts of, of Russia, and um, they go so far as to get to the city of uh, Stalingrad. Where is it on this map? Well, Stalingrad is going to be uh, over here. This is, they call it Volgograd now. Um, so Stalingrad... Gets all the way over here. It's a huge, huge battle. It's a huge, decisive battle on the Eastern Front. And a record cold winter hits Russia as Germans are surrounding the city. Um, and in the end, the Soviet forces prevail in really heavy street fighting and close quarters combat. Uh, the Germans just can't take the city. The, 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 their soldiers are dying because of disease, and, and they don't have the right equipment. And the Russians will actually flank the German army and, and cut them off at the city, just completely wiping them out. Um, very interesting. And you can see kind of some pictures. Here are some Russian soldiers fighting during Stalingrad in 1942. Uh, here at the end of the battle, you see a, a triumphant Russian waving the Russian flag, a glorious day for Russia. Um, and then, of course, you know, this video here, which is a very interesting, and it's got some nice dialogue on it as well. So we, we see that uh, in the east, in, in the east, in the Soviet Union, as Germany invades, by 1942, the war is essentially turned back on the Germans. The Germans are stopped along this line right here in Germany, this kind of uh, diagonal, bumpy line. And the, the Russians, af after this point in 1942, will actually start having a very functional military industrial complex. Um, we were talking about the T-34s previously. Now, these were the most produced tanks in World War II. No other tanks were produced more than the Soviet T-34. So it goes to show you that even after a country can be completely invaded, that their industrial base can still keep very strong. And, I mean, millions and millions of people died in the Soviet Union during this war. And a lot of them died on these front lines in the major cities. But there was also so many more Russians that were working in factories and trying to make guns and munitions, getting money from the Americans. And in the end, that really did turn the tide in the East. And, and many people will say that, that, that Hitler's biggest fault in this war was to start a, a two-front war, both the front in the East uh, with the Soviet Union and the front in the West with the United Kingdom, and later on we'll see the Americans. So that gives a pretty good uh, breakdown of what happens in, in the war between 1941 and, and 1942. So, um, you know, go watch those videos. They're very, very good. And, um, you know, review it if you need to. And there's lots of really interesting information here. And what we'll do next time is go over the actual campaigns in the war. So I will see you in the next video.